Thank you for having me. Um, I teach in Windsor High School. I've taught ninth and 10th grade. This will be my 15th year in the classroom. And when I entered the classroom about 14 years ago, I was eager to create the classroom I had been dreaming about in credential school. And in my very elaborate fantasies about what this classroom was gonna be like, kids were gonna bound through the door, excited and eager to learn. Oh yeah, we're gonna sit in circles, we're gonna talk about literature and life. It was gonna be really great. Um, and then I actually got into the classroom and the reality was somewhat different. Kids did not want to engage in conversations. They did not want to take risks. And I remember having this moment where it was a few years into my teaching career and I thought, oh my gosh, I have made an enormous mistake. I have entered the wrong profession. I did not sign up for this. And my story changed when I started replacing pen and paper homework assignments with online discussions. I really wanted to figure out how do I get these kids involved in this class because they were so content to be just these passive observers. And the very first night I posted my first question, I, I was checking constantly because I was terrified. You know, what are you gonna, what are a bunch of teenagers gonna do when you like let them loose online? So my, to my surprise, within literally 20 minutes of posting that first question, the first three kids to respond were kids who never talk in my class. For whatever reason, not comfortable talking. Super sweet kids, but maybe they're shy or they need more time to process. And it wasn't until I gave them this other avenue that they really were able to join the class dialogue. And for me, that was definitely my like wake up call, my aha moment. These kids want a voice and they need an audience. And as I was reading through their posts, I was stunned. They were interesting, they were insightful. Like I never saw that quality of depth of thought when I was collecting paper. Because you know why? Kids don't do their homework thinking, oh, this is gonna knock Tucker's socks off, right? Like they don't wanna impress me, but they want to impress each other. And from that moment on, I realized these kids needed to be connected to an authentic audience. And if I could do that as their teacher, I could really get them to deliver their best work. And so we really moved from those online discussions, which by the way, transformed my in-class experience. All the kids who had engaged online were so much more willing to engage in the classroom and enter those conversations and take risks. And I thought, okay, what's next? So we started blogging. And at first I remember thinking about blogging and I was like, gosh, what am I going to have them blog about? And then I realized, why do I need to control what they blog about? Why not let kids make that choice and blog about something they're passionate about? So we wrote passion blogs and kids wrote, you know, every week or a couple of weeks and they started tracking the, the kind of activity on their blog and, and they wrote about all kinds of different topics, right? So some kids talked about, you know, what it's like to be a teenager. This one's called 18 Years in Captivity. And she, she writes about things like why it sucks to be at school when it's raining, right? legitimately probably not super fun to be at school when it's raining but they had this outlet for their ideas and things that they were interested in and they start tracking their blog traffic realizing that people from all over the world were stumbling on and reading their blogs and it was so powerful for them to realize that their audience wasn't limited to me and it wasn't limited to their peer group. Their audience could potentially be global, which like blows my mind because when I was in high school, that I couldn't have even wrapped my mind around that reality, that these kids are really, this connectivity they have to each other and to other people allows them to push their ideas out into the world. Um, I have a student, her name's Katie, and she's so sweet, she's very quirky, and she writes a Pokemon blog. And her Pokemon blog has gotten over 2,400 visits. She tracks her, uh, her activity. People from all over the world are reading her blog. And this is a student who in the classroom sometimes struggles to find that voice. But man, give her an outlet like this and she 
thrives. So blogging was a total success. And it was from there that I decided, gosh, what else can I do? How else can I get kids out there and sharing their ideas? And I was invited to attend the TED conference. And I sat at the TED conference listening to these just awe-inspiring speakers. And I thought, I want my kids to do that. I want them to articulate and I want them to send those ideas out into the world in, in, a, in a performance where they really are delivering a talk. And so I decided to become a TED Ed facilitator. And I was so pumped. I get back to school and I was like, guess what we're going to do? You're going to deliver TED style talks. It's going to be so great. Um, I, my excitement was met with like gasps. And not gasps of excitement, gasps of horror. Like, what? I have to give a talk? You're going to record it? We're going to put it online? Like, who's going to want to hear my talk? And what was sad is that so many of them genuinely felt that because they were teenagers, they couldn't possibly give a talk on a topic that mattered. And that is a problem. If these kids are going to make a change in this world like I'm hoping they will, they need to believe they have a voice and that their ideas matter. So there was a lot of trepidation at first, but they really did, as soon as they kind of started deciding, what do I care about? What do I want to say about this topic? Then they got excited and they started brainstorming with each other. They were researching their topics. They were practicing with peers. And what they created was absolutely incredible. I'm gonna share a couple of clips with you guys of what they did. Hewlett, and I'm here to talk to you today about how over the summer I had a very scary, very real reoccurring dream. Now, it wasn't about any scary animals or monsters, but I would often wake up to the realization that I'm closer to adulthood than I thought, and that once I'm an adult, I can't go back. Thinking about this now, it was all because my subconscious knew that I, as a person, am not prepared for the quote-unquote real world. This presentation will be dedicated to things that the school system or any other sources should teach students like me so that we can survive what's ahead. There are simple things that we can add to classroom curriculum that will better prepare the future of tomorrow in the areas of science, math, economics, English, home economics, and health slash sex education. So Eliza goes into all of those things that we can do better in education to prepare her for what comes next. She was poised, she was articulate, articulate, and her ideas were fantastic. And I thought, why aren't we just asking the kids how we can change education? Because they have some fantastic ideas. I want to share another one with you. This is Paloma. She's a ninth grader who wrote her, her kind of script and then performed her talk, and it was titled Redefining Feminism. So originally I was going to do my presentation on ballet, but then I caught part of conversation that inspired me to do my presentation on redefining feminism. I walked into this classroom while everyone was discussing their topics for the core final, and I overheard one of my male peers telling other female students not to do their talk on feminism. And it seemed to me, he was saying how boring it had been last year, hearing all these girls presenting on feminism. And it seemed to me that he was very dismissive about the topic, as if he saw no value in it. So naturally, I decided to do my talk on feminism. I began to question why it was that nowadays people shy away from the term feminist and choose not to be associated with it. I realized that feminism has morphed into a term with negative connotations in today's society. Part of this may be attributed to the misconception that many people have that in the United States we have achieved equality between men and women. However, being treated equally under the eyes of the law is not enough. There must be mutual respect between each gender. The fact that women make up nearly 51% of the population, yet hold just 16% of the seats in Congress, the fact that one in three girls between the ages of 16 and 18 say sex is expected for people their age if they're in a relationship, and the fact that only 2% of women think they're beautiful says there's something wrong with the way that women perceive themselves and the way in which society and media tells everyone to view women. Women are being marginalized, objectified, overly sexualized, and not being portrayed as intellectuals through media, which is why we see such a discrepancy between men and women in high power positions. Wow. Right? This is just a small sampling of talks. And not only did they, the, the students who signed up for the TED Ed Club, get to have their talks posted 
at the TED Ed YouTube channel or on the TED Ed YouTube channel, but they also posted them on their own private YouTube channels, which we add to all year long because our kids are stomping around the internet leaving some kind of footprint. And I'm trying to make sure it's a positive one. And so here we have Autumn, and she gave her talk on why we need to teach sex education in high school. It is jam-packed with facts. She's so dynamic as a speaker. 675 views last week. It was over 690 when I looked at it at the, the beginning of this week. Um, just incredible the kind of traffic these kids get when they put quality ideas out there. And what I think is so interesting for me as a teacher is if I had allowed my own fear of what students would do or say online to limit their potential as learners, none of this would have happened. It's so important that we as teachers get past our fear, take risks like we ask our kids to do every single day, help those kids find their voice, and connect them to an authentic audience because that's when they create things that matter. Thank you.